Welcome back. Since Proposition 13 was passed in 1978, Californians have moved away from representational democracy and instead chosen to rely more and more on direct democracy through the use of initiatives, propositions, and referendums. Uh, recently, Dave, The Economist magazine wrote a special report on uh, the political process in California and described it as, quote, an experiment in extreme democracy gone wrong. They specifically focused on the initiative process and the way it's redistributed power away from the legislature and given it to the people directly. And this is what they said. The net effect of all the initiatives is that the legislative branch of California's government has been split into two. The initiative process, originally meant to be a safety valve, has in reality become a rival to the legislature. Two lawmaking bodies, the voters and the representatives, are in open competition. The tragedy is that this undermines democracy by eliminating one of the main purposes, accountability. So, does the initiative process need to be reformed? I think it definitely does. I don't think it's the kind of thing we need to do away with completely. I think it has a purpose and, and served it well. I, I, and I think that if we can get back to a situation where we once again have a functional legislature uh, that is responsive to the needs of the people, uh, you'll see less and less demand to use the initiative process. How would you like to see it reformed? Well, I, I think you know the idea of the sunset certainly uh, is a good idea. Like after ten years, if the voters don't right. approve it again, it goes away. Exactly. I think those things need to be reviewed because it's always done in, in a relatively short period of time. Even if it's a year or maybe two in the in the uh, process of putting it together and getting it before the voters, and oftentimes uh, the people don't know all of the negative effects or negative consequences yeah, mm -hmm. uh, of these initiatives until it's too late. And the courts have taken a position that they won't review these initiatives before they go to uh, the voters, in many cases, to determine the constitutionality beforehand. So you get this frustration on the part of the voter many times that passes an initiative thinking it's going to solve a problem and then the court stays unconstitutional. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about the initiative process? Well, I, I think that uh, Hiram Johnson started, uh, you know, I don't know if you call it an experiment, but he started a process to allow voters to speak, and that's what he did in California. He was trying to reform a system then that had a lot of problems, and frankly, there was a lot of graft going on in the legislature way back when. The fundamental reason he wanted to reform government gives people a voice, I support. But I agree with Dave and most everyone else, we need reform in the system, because what we've created really is just a cottage industry of people who create initiatives, who do the polling and the testing and the commercials, and they write the ballot statements, and they run the mail that goes to people. And it's never really on an issue, it's just about making money. And that's why we have sometimes upwards of 20 different initiatives that might be on a ballot. We need to have a, a, a high threshold for voters, and then we need to make sure that there's a review period, like David said, so it's really something that the state of California, the people have come together to say, this is important. So the people that are out there outside the store, they're collecting signatures. They're getting paid for those signatures? Everybody's getting paid. The signature gatherers, those that write the ballot statement, the lawyers who are paid to help do that and, and see what the challenge will be, those that um, we collect signatures, the polling, everything. It's a cottage industry we've created. And I don't think the voters need to understand that. You know, one of the unintended consequences is this problem called ballot box budgeting, where the, the budget is on automatic pilot. Some say upwards of 70% of the budget is on automatic pilot. Is that a good idea or a bad idea? It's a bad idea. It's a terrible idea. Uh, again, but it was one of these things that, uh, on its face, uh, if you're talking about an agency just such as Prop uh, 98 that deal, deals with K-12 or K-14, actually, um, school funding to say that we want 40 cents of every dollar to be dedicated to education, sounds like a good thing to do. But in reality, you find out after a while that uh, we're basically providing that dollar, that 40 cents of every dollar, uh, without any real accountability and the kind of safeguards we'd all like to see as it relates to how the money's actually spent. But it's all supposed to be very, very complicated. There's something like only five it's people in South Carolina know exactly yeah. how the funding works. It's extremely complicated. Yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, I want to ask uh, you from the lines about um, the situation with voters. They have a tendency to blame the legislature for these reoccurring budget crises. But isn't that kind of resembling the boy who murders his parents and then complains he's an orphan? I mean, they pass all these initiatives, um, and then they tie the legislature's hands and say, okay, now you deal with it. Well, it's a heck of an analogy, but, um, but I would agree that uh, what happens is, and I think Dave made this point earlier, it's, it's a valid point, it's a great point to repeat, a lot of times initiatives are passed in the heat of the moment. It could be to address a crime issue, and we've done that in the state. You know, we, hey, we, want, we don't want our children being kidnapped, and if they are, we're going to do something the about it. Free strikes. Um, it could be because of fiscal crisis. It could be because of property value, which is Prop 13. These all inherently have wisdom and are smart, but 
But every 10 years, we should reevaluate, do we want to do this? Because here's the implications of it. We may want to keep it, we may not. But it's not a good idea to have any business literally only be able to spend, you know, 25% of their money on investment or anything else. The rest of it locked up um, makes it very difficult to do. The government has its hands tied. Um, and a lot of it comes from the courts, by the way. It's funny we haven't mentioned lawsuits that happen in California regularly will tie the hands of the legislature. That's why we have inordinate costs in prison health care. Working people can't get health care, and yet we're providing it at numbers that are outrageous in prisons because of lawsuits. Okay, well, when we come back, we'll discuss what can be done to restore the effectiveness and the credibility of the legislature, the heart of any representative democracy. That conversation will return. This is the Mayor Report.